Hey YouTube, so today we are talking vehicles and we're talking specifically those dogs who maybe don't like to get into the car or struggle with the experience of the car in general. Dogs who generally make your life difficult when you're walking because actively don't want to go home. Yeah. They don't enjoy this experience. And we're here to tell you that we've been through exactly this experience and we've, we've got multiple dogs throughout our training, throughout yeah. all of the, the dogs that we train all over the world who have had success doing just this. So we're gonna head into the car, we're gonna bring you with us and we're gonna show you exactly what we do. Okay, so here we are, we're at the vehicle. Now your vehicle might be a car, might be a van, might be a truck, might be a pickup. Doesn't really matter what the vehicle is. For us, our dogs travel in crates, so they always travel safely. If they're not in a crate, they will be either on a harness or very safely secured. And for us, crates are the way we do it. Equally, we want you to do whatever is the right solution for you, right? Absolutely, and the first tip that we've got for you is exactly what we're demonstrating here, that as you can see, we're not going anywhere. We're talking to you and yet our trusted dogs are in their crates in the car. Now, um, the best way to explain this is to actually think about a different species. And it's rare that I will talk about them, but I'm going to talk about cats. The okay? species of now, absolute cats. Yeah, absolute cats. It's going to happen. Now, um, absolute cats, what happens with cats? Well, what, when do they go in the car? They go in the car to go to the vets. They go in the car to maybe go to the cattery. Do they go in the car for any other reason? Nothing else. Purely <laughs> bad. <laughs> no, bad purely stuff happens. Bad, um, situations. And so do cats enjoy traveling? Do they kind of look to you in hope that they might be coming with you in the car? Very few cats do that, right? And that's because they go places and they always go places and it is an event and it is a bad event. Now with dogs, what we have is we have, um, what we could fall into is every time they go somewhere, it's an event. And sometimes it's a super scary event, like um, the vets or, or something else um, or sometimes it's a super exciting event like the beach or somewhere they can go for a crazy yeah. run and so what does the car what emotion might the car trigger well it's probably going to trigger either fear or over excitement and dogs are pretty quick to go okay we're getting in the car this is really exciting yeah. we're going for the woodland walk or the sand beach walk whatever it might be and equally towards the end when it comes to putting them back in it they're going oh dear lord we're going home Ooh. we don't want to go home or it might be actually when he puts me in here I don't have a great time the thing is, your dog will be very quick at picking up those, I suppose, signals yeah. that actually it's not a cool place. Yeah. So the first piece of advice that we have for you is super simple. It's a bit of a freebie. When it's, you know, a, a, a cool, not too hot day, preferably not raining, please don't rain. No um, rain. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pop your dogs in the vehicle and maybe you're going to read a book. Maybe you're going to read a book outside. Maybe you're going to answer your emails. You're going to listen yeah. to a podcast. Maybe you're going to listen to one of your calming apps. Mm. Whatever it might be, you could do that and your dog's just got in the car and got out again it's not a big deal yeah. this is a non event for your dog. Now the second tip, and this is a really big one, actually it's still a non-event. I have got multiple dogs here and at the same time I've got some of their daily food for the day. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Everest out of the crate. Now when I open her crate, I'm going to open that crate and she actually doesn't get out until I release her out of the crate. So until I release her out of that crate, she's not given permission to come out. I might still feed her in that crate, so I might give her some food in that crate and then I might release her out of that crate ever. Now when when she comes out of that crate I'm actually going to see will she get back in the crate and actually this is a big deal so many people do not have this so a dog that when they come out they come out and they go running yeah. now this for my dogs it is somewhere they run it's it's the it's the field at home it's the paddock it's where they enjoy lots of running equally the crate has a lot of value and that's because we deliver some of our ditch the bowl food you guys know what that is by now and if you don't you can definitely check it out right tom yeah absolutely now what if we think about what's actually happening Ever. here well what's happening with your dog Super. at the moment the value nice. is always outside Good the girl. crate the, the value is always Super. as soon as they exit the car they Good. get to go for a walk or Good. you know they get to go to the beach or whatever it might be Good. instead Ever. what we're doing is we're saying Super. actually the value comes to nice. you in there and we nice. sometimes release you out of that crate, <laughs> yeah. which is just basically boundary games. So those of you who want to learn more about boundary games, you can find Good. out more at Absolute Dogs. So absolute-dogs.com. Um, and we nice. are then going to deliver Super the dog. value back into the crate. Super dog. Now, the big thing here is that Ever sees a good deal from being in the crate. It's a good deal. Now, 
this might help you for your dog because I've got two dogs here and actually one of them sees different value to the other. So Everest is working for some dried food. Tokyo, however, he thinks the van isn't so good. He doesn't enjoy the experience of the van because he wants to go out and about and run around a bit more. So when he comes out of his crate, number one, he's much quicker to try and push to get out of the crate. I'm using higher value food with him. So I'm actually using chicken. So I'm using something a little bit nicer. When I release release him out of this crate toe. I'm going to actually only let him get to this point. Very nice. And then I'm going to feed him back in there. So he's actually not even toe getting completely out. And then I feed him nice back in there. So he gets fed there. Now I might toe, you can come out this side and see what his choice is. Wow. Boy. Super boy. And see what his choice is to get back in here. And equally, if your dogs aren't able to handle this and you've got maybe one dog, two dogs, they aren't able to handle it together. You can actually just do this alone. So it doesn't have to be together. As you can see, he offers a level of self-control. So I bring him out and then we see what he wants to offer and he wants to get back in there. Now that for me is a huge win. And yet if I offered him the dried food to do that, he would say it was a bad deal. So you do need to look at your own individual dog and decide what is a good deal and what is a bad deal. Equally, you can see classics also up here. She's not doing ins and outs. That's okay. She doesn't have to do ins and outs every time. Equally, if that crate opens, then she isn't meant to get out. She's meant to hang out in there. And that's because it's a good deal. It's valuable to her. It's valuable to all of our dogs for us to have the crates open and they don't see that as the reason to escape. If they do feel the need to rush, rush out and run out, that's simply because the crate and the value hasn't been um, correctly adjusted, yeah, right, Tom? Absolutely. Like the transfer value hasn't happened to being in there. Now, a top tip, guys, for those of you starting out with this process is you might want to have your dog on lead to do these sessions. And the cool thing about that is even if they make the wrong choice and decide to, I don't know, have a little explore, then you've got them on lead so that actively they can't, that can't be rewarded. And then you can remind them where the value is by chicken back in the crate. And when you're playing this on lead guys, and Tom makes a really valid point when I first started with him, particularly because he didn't like the vehicle, he didn't really need to go in the vehicle for a long time. And because he didn't need to go in the vehicle, he really then when he did go in the vehicle naughty owner had kind of not really put him in it enough and actually he didn't think it was a great experience so actually what we had to do is go back and put some value in so the lead really helped to safeguard the choices he made so it made it much easier to make those choices um, and so as you can see all of the dogs that we are working with they all see great value in being in their crate and equally they see great value in getting back in and I think that's important. Very quick tip actually, I haven't got a lot of chicken left, but very quick tip, um, when you've got a dog that needs to jump up class, that's another big deal. So um, for her, that is something that almost is a separate, um, it's a separate sort of tip really Tom, right? There's, and yeah. there's other tips we can play on this class, yeah. but for her, that was a separate trick. Um, and effectively, if you do have a dog that's physically able to jump in a vehicle, then that in itself is another skill. And it's something that I know this seems like really sort of easy, normal stuff. And yet it makes my life so much easier when my dogs can get in and out of a vehicle easily yeah. without it being uh, difficult for, for me or for my dog. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, on that subject, the, the kind of final, um, well, there's two more tips actually, two more tips. So the next tip that, that we've got for you is um, make sure that you're asking your dog's permission to put them into the vehicle, okay? And what we mean by that is when we're in a rush and you know, we've got things going on, we're very quick to kind of be like, right, you're going in the vehicle. I mean, we could probably um, demonstrate if you wanted to with classic. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you, I'm happy for yeah, you, to, yeah, you to take, because this is something that Tom has to work on, particularly having poodles, right? Yeah. They, they need permission. Yeah, it's absolutely. about permission. And so what you've got to decide is what would be an appropriate um, what would be class, class, class? What would be an appropriate permission that your dog could ask for? Now, we don't mind our dogs jumping up, so we actively will train this as a way of our dog saying, please pick me up, please put me in the car. And all you're gonna do is reward two feet up. So again, see what we choose to do, good. And then maybe, you see how she backed away there? I'm not gonna worry about that. What I'm gonna think is actually, she took away her permission there. And that is totally fine. And all I'm gonna do is practice touching her and seeing if we can keep her. She's chewing. She's busy it's, it's chewing. The issue here. Big um, treats. <laughs> then we can see if 
These are very big they treats. They are big <laughs> treats. They are very big treats. The chicken was better. They're good. Good. Nice. That's really nice. If actually we can just get a bit of permission going on. Good. I know. And equally, this permission might be putting two feet on the vehicle. This yeah. might be putting two feet um, somewhere else. So you, you literally, there's lots of different ways to get your yeah. dog to actually, um, good girl, hop up, class. Um, it, it's really important that we actually get, get mm. our dogs comfortable in, in either being yeah. handled into the vehicle or getting themselves into the vehicle, yeah. depending so, on the dog, right? Exactly. So the, you know, the, the kind of permission that, that my dogs would have to teach a few different ones, it would be, you know, two feet up on me and therefore then I pick them up rather than going down to them where they're likely to think that's a bit of a punishing experience and um, or if for example um, like let's take magma for example one year old standard poodle um, standard poodles can get very easily offended about a variety of things that we don't even realize they're being offended by so when she's going on the grooming table um, what she'll do is I will ask her to put her front paws on the grooming table and then I will lift the rest of her up I do not go down to her I don't start chasing her around because what that's going to do is probably make it a bit of a punishing experience make this a bit of a conflict area and when it comes to ending your walks what you're going to create is that conflict at the end of your walk and that will track back through your walk so they increasingly start to figure out when the end of the walk is coming and think i don't want this walk to end i'm not going to go back on lead. and basically your dog will not enjoy that experience yeah. so most of all guys happy travels with your dogs yeah. making sure you and your dogs have good vehicle journeys together for me this is absolute bread and butter of owning a dog it makes life easy when your dog will get in get out yeah. doesn't need to be overhandled is happy and is, is good to give you permission if you do need to handle and at the same time you've got like a freedom of movement a freedom of ability to in and out without you coming out you bolting out and you rushing off this is a good space it's a safe space and it's a space we want to keep Keep rewarding so with that guys there's a game for that we've just got to realize that it can be a game and break it down that was this episode of absolute dogs tv leave us a comment under this video and let us know what you thought what you'd love to love us to teach more of let us know about your dog the more we get to know you the more we can help hit subscribe and we'll see you next time Remember, game changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25 day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember, to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description. Yeah.